shocked how cool that looks. This is my life. Something will come out and everybody in the world will send me the same thing. You can see the bones through his hand there. The light of the explosion is so bright. I was about to say, is it wires? But then I'm like, I mean, literally what else could it be? <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Stick around to the end to see how you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hey everyone, welcome to Visual Effects Artist React. Today we have a very special guest, none other than Captain Dissolution's intern, Alan. Hi everybody, <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Uh, the captain sends his best, but obviously he couldn't make time. But I'm here on his behalf and I I hope to do a good job. You're still unpaid, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. It's been only about 14 years. So the captain says I'm coming up on a review period when I can finally start talking about maybe having a, a, some per diem from my 24-hour shifts. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. It's not like I do all the work for him or anything. I don't want you guys to think that. Uh, I, I do do all the editing and all the analyzing and all the script writing. So, you know, it's a collaborative <laughs> effort. <laughs> Intern or not, it is an honor to have you join us on the couch. I've been watching your videos for years. I think you're an amazing educator, communicator, and you do dang good VFX. I'm excited for everyone watching because the requests have been like relentless. <laughs> and I'm, I'm here, internet bullies. I'm here finally, I hope you're happy. It's cool, like there's not a lot of other people also like breaking stuff down like this. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do feel at home. I've never really been like, among people who are on the same wavelengths about the way I look at VFX and the way I consume this kind of stuff. Well, let's jump into some clips. Let's, let's look at some totally. stuff together. Yeah, let's do it. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. I'm surprised they haven't actually reacted to Back to the Future yet. Look at that trust in his inventions. And willing to <laughs> sacrifice a high school kid if it goes wrong <laughs> and himself. I forgot how cool that looks. Like the energy that it's like running into, like it, it feels like it's like piercing through something. It's really well animated. This is all hand drawn by the artist that did all the lightning as well. I kind of miss that hand drawn glowy energy look. My childhood memory of seeing this for the first time wasn't like, oh, that's fake. It was like, it's cool how he can just be cool about fire hitting his leg. Like it didn't cross <laughs> my mind that it's fake. Well, because they have that one shot of like what seems to be dummies. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just like they probably just built just the legs of, <laughs> of them or something. <laughs> yeah. If you think about it, it's kind of a funny shot to just like drop in in a sequence like this. <laughs> it's like a huge night sequence and like one shot is just them on a blue screen <laughs> instead of just being there. I think they're standing on glass so that they could have that reflection. They're actually on mylar, that oh. kind of reflective stuff you make for balloons. Oh, okay. So it's like that's why it's a little bit diffused looking. That makes sense. It's really funny like how crude this explosion looks now. <laughs> like they just play it halfway and they play it backwards. You see the effect they're trying to go for that's replicated now. It's like that kind of turbulent, like getting sucked into something effect, but it does look a little bit weird now. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange because people think of it as like an effects movie, but really it's like not really that much going on. It's just a good movie and yeah. the effects are used in like a really smart way. Do you know there's actually only 27 VFX shots in the entire film? Whoa, yeah, I knew it was low, but not that low. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's why we haven't looked at it yet. Yeah, I heard that most of it is just like optical lightning. <laughs> <laughs> when they were coming up with the look of time travel for Back to the Future 1, Terminator had just come out and Robert Zemeckis was saying like, no electricity. I don't want any electricity in my effects. It's got to be something else. I want it to be ugly. I don't want it to be pretty. You're piercing time. You're breaking it open. Well, what's interesting, I heard him in interviews say, you know, he's not into kind of going back and cleaning things up, fixing things up. Like in part two, uh, after the hoverboard chase, when the bad guys are crashing through the glass of the courthouse, you could clearly see some like flying rigs. Yeah, right there. Yeah, you can see a little bit of her wire there. So they're not painting out wires. They didn't do it originally when the movie came out. So like that shot where they're all flying towards the camera. This is either cleaned up recently or the cables are that fine. Like how thin of a cable does that have to be? Because every single time I've took string or thread or tried 
to go, they used to do it like this. It should be invisible. <laughs> I film it and then I, the string's there. <laughs> you see a string. It's like I've never understood quite how people have got that effect to actually function. Speaking of very thin wires, it's a known enough fact like the David Copperfield illusion of like the flying man and how that's done. That doesn't involve being in a really precarious like wiring situation. <laughs> VFX artists react to live magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new, it, you, a new... But the thing is like, what's the difference? Like, why are we allowed to ruin VFX shots for people, but not magic shows? They're the same thing. <laughs> it's just one's being filmed. Yeah. <laughs> Flight. It's really well done. Yeah, I mean, having looked at wire work in movies, you know, people doing stunts and all that kind of stuff, the amount of control that we are seeing here is actually really impressive. It's it was really smooth. I was about to say, is it wires? But then I'm like, I mean, literally what else could it be? <laughs> <laughs> it's like an array. Oh, wow. What? That's a lot of wires. They're all one millimeter. One millimeter? It's just like the thinnest. The skinniest like, of wires. Well, it's also like I'm seeing we have a moving background. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot optically done to help hide things. Yeah, like the standard definition is helping. Well, come on. What do you mean, come on? He just there's, they proved it. Nothing, <laughs> look, there's nothing beneath and nothing above. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just pass this ring <laughs> over you. <laughs> yeah, well, that proves there's no wire. <laughs> look at him. He's just like, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I can fly. <laughs> well, it's funny. All the clips I brought today are people flying on wires. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> That looks like it'd be a lot of fun. I know. See, and that's what I was thinking. It's like the effects are cool, but also I'm like, this is actually kind of capturing that weird dreamlike feeling of yeah. flying around. It's pretty cool. I'm guessing it's like really good wire work in studio and then just CG mock-ups of them that are, you know, making the environment interaction. So there's some stuff you look at and you're like, this is very CG. You can tell there's some compositing happening, especially here at the end. But if you go back to the very first shot, the shot of this wave coming, I was like, whoa, that kind of, was that a CG thing? It, like, it's very CG-esque. There's a helicopter flying over the field right there. Oh, really? Uh, so th that's real grass movement. And I was like, wait, the amount of distance they're covering is beyond comprehension sometimes. Are they just dangling on a frickin' chopper? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually doing this. Oh, really? They have like these like 150 foot cranes. Oh, wow. It's just like mega, mega, mega level wire work. The cranes are so big, like they're not even in any of these shots. Look at this, like where are they? Basically, they're just creating these zip lines that are spanning hundreds of feet with these massive cranes. And then a ton of paint outs, ton of background replacements, all the basic stuff. That's how they get you. They just did it for real. <laughs> and they just did it. And they stumped me. Yeah, we're so used to seeing like the spectacular be faked these days that when the spectacular turns out to be real, it's very refreshing. If we're talking about visual magic tricks. You did send over a few TikToks. I think yes. they're worth taking a look at. This is my life, really, where something will come out and everybody in the world will send me the same thing. And sometimes it's easy to explain, but sometimes it's like something like this. This is my Bluetooth hose, and a lot of people thought I was using a green screen or like the water was fake, but it's legit just... This is funny. I remember saying this. This is a, it was like the Bluetooth hose. This is like the follow-up video uh, he made after people were like, oh, fake. The first video is a little bit, I feel like you can hypothesize what was done. And this one, he's like, okay, they're on to me. So he did some things differently. So I'm just going to say right now, the first one is a paint out. It's a hose paint out. Look at the way he's holding it. I can feel the weight in his hand. Yeah. And I think the second one, his follow up, I think he's comping in the stream of water there. That's like either like an element or like a particle, or maybe he just turned on the hose and filmed it against black. And like when he puts his hand in front of it there, first off, we don't see his hand again. We can't tell it's wet, actually wet from it. And we're just seeing this diversion. And the way that the stream starts, it's a little too like easy. Like it doesn't drip on his fingers. Yeah. You might be right but they might have also just like ins drilled in and installed some kind of side inlet for the water. If you look at how he's holding it, there could be a little thing going between his yeah. pointer and his middle finger there along the back of his hand. Because you know it just sticks there, right? Yeah, he's holding it in a very particular way. If there's a side hose in that last dropping shot, he transitions it to one that has a normal hose. Mm. 
so that it can land properly. So I guess there's an actual behind the scenes of the hose. Oh, let's yeah. see how we did. So it's actually not Bluetooth. It's oh, hose yes. through the fingers. So much simpler. But that doesn't explain how I was able to drop the hose and have nothing connected to it. So to do that, first I took a video of just the grass. I got that right too. He transitions from one to another. That's good magicianship. I mean, this is basically being a magician. And what happens now is that like this couple of videos blew up and now he's gonna have to be like, Feeling the pressure of coming up with something yeah, of equal. He's at the hardware store, just like yeah. walking around. What else? <laughs> like what nervously else? pacing down the aisles of Home Depot. I need ideas, people. <laughs> What's the smallest nail gun you have? <laughs> I mean, but you know, but that's a thing though. That's a thing. Yeah. You can make a career out of that, kids. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh boy, this one. I've seen this one. This is happening. the promise of 3D TVs finally realized. So have you looked at any behind the scenes on this? No, I'm curious to see, but I mean, I could tell either a lot of really cool 3D tracking going on or everything's CG and there's just <laughs> like bits of a person being comped and... I actually know how this is done, Sam, yeah. do you also? Yep. Teach me. Sam Wickert, who's that guy right there, was actually over here about two months ago. And this is a video they had just dropped and he gave us the rundown. Sam, right. take it away. Uh, there's a hole in the wall. Right. <laughs> Big surprise, right? It's a set right. with a hole, and they track the camera, and he goes through it. Nice. I'm pretty sure they did this with Unreal. It feels Unreal-y, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they uh, even used their virtual camera tracking system for it. Simple, right. but highly technical and well executed. It looks so cool. Speaking of first person shots, you guys want to deviate from TikTok and get back to old school movies? Let's oh do it. boy. Doom 2005. Wow. <laughs> They're emulating the video game look really well by just making everything out of cardboard, I guess. <laughs> this is way slower than I remember it being. I thought this was like really high intensity, like running around. It has that ultra slowed down quality to it. Like, make sure you see this thing we worked on. He fell into my trap. <laughs> oh no, a what? <laughs> You can see the bones through his hand there. Did you notice that? The light of the explosion is so bright. Yeah, x-ray bones will never go out of style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Now, now it's getting like kind of moving normally. Wait, is this because it's 100% CG now? It's okay. gotta be. Yeah. That's probably why, where it's like, okay, for the end fight, let's just do it all CG. And that way we don't have to have like the steady cam operator like carefully tiptoeing. <laughs> Another interesting decision is that they filmed the gun separately. The gun's not part of the shots, it's like a green screen element. I guess that makes sense to do. Probably been kind of crazy to try to have the gun there the whole time. Yeah, it's one of those sequences where like the VFX aren't actually bad or anything. Just the sequence itself feels odd and a little outdated. But that's sometimes what happens when you pioneer things and you try stuff out for the first time. That's right. Everybody was complaining about how uh, the Polar Express looks creepy, but I'm sorry. They were breaking new ground. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the part where I usually ask you to subscribe, and I'm gonna do just that. Please subscribe to Captain Dissolution's channel. Thank you. If you enjoy visual effects artists react, just imagine the production quality ramped up tenfold and the writing actually being written versus improv on the spot. Yeah, if you want a non-improvised version of Visual Effects Artist React, check out his channel. The lore, <laughs> there's deep lore. There's like deep Captain Disillusion lore. And if you're watching this and you're not subscribed to this, then this, that doesn't make any sense. Subscribe right now, right, right there. Thank you. Is there an effect in one of your videos that you're particularly proud of? Oh geez, you'll break the illusion of me seeming like a good VFX artist. Where like all I'm making, <laughs> all I make is like goofy and janky. I mean, that's we're, what we're we in the exact same boat. <laughs> <laughs> Every video has a half life of relevance, and I admit I don't always get to all of them in time. While being somewhat like inspired by like 80s and 90s aesthetic, I also feel like I just rely on it. Everything looks 80s and 90s when you work on it and then you just refine it to the point of today. But sometimes <laughs> yeah. I just don't do it or like I don't have the time to do it. And I just stop at that place where it's like, oh, this looks a little bit old school and I kind of like it. What they did was film it. <sighs> I love the attention to detail you put into your work. Yeah. Like everything from at the very beginning when you're like, you're tapping on the screen, it breaks and the shadow of it is also broken. It's like, that's the kind of stuff that most people wouldn't take the time to do. Uh, a lot of these have been covered way back. In I the sometimes day. have episodes like this where like stuff starts slowly happening and the environment changes. You know, it's like little things like that's this. Cool. 
Eventually the room keeps getting more and more degraded. I gotta take it easier on the people around me, like friends and interns and such. And your 3D work is also really good. You hit the whole breadth of things. Compositing, animation, motion graphics, writing. Yeah, this looks great. Well, thank you. It's no Doom 2005, <laughs> it's, it does the job. Yeah, I know it's projection mapping and that the real ladder is quickly swung in and out at certain moments. Even the corridor crew figured that much out. Hey, 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 I know. Hey, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> VFX Arts React or VFX Arts React? <laughs> Was I saying nice things or bad things? I You're remember. making fun of our, our reaction faces. I see. <laughs> 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 we have to remember to get some reaction faces for thumbnails and stuff. I want to like do right. full Ren like <laughs> No! <laughs> that was a good Ren impression. <laughs> you got the ball fists and everything. <laughs> At the beginning of this whole sequence I'm like flying so I just like sat on a apple box and did <laughs> Real old school. Remember, love with your heart, use your head for everything else. Captain Disillusion. That broom shot, that was good. <laughs> look at this, look at this. Where's that broom coming from? Well, do you want to have a chance to hypothesize about it <laughs> before I reveal the magic? You're isolating yourself to zoom out further to make the room feel bigger, I think. And so in that negative space there on the outside of the room, it's either like being propped up or you're being handed it. Yeah, the last part is right. I'm being handed it. It's just my good old dad just sitting in the corner and like swinging it in <laughs> uh, well it's tough because well first of all there's a thing on the wall which i'm always struggling against there's like a decorative lamp on the wall installed on there so it's it's hard for me to take it off so it's not a um, set it's yeah it's a room in my in my ah. parents house that's <laughs> that i had been filming in from the beginning when i had lived there so i just go back to film there <laughs> so. but uh there's like a janky sort of shadow of me ending there because i was trying to digitally paint that out so i'm like reconstructing a bit of that shadow for the moment that it's being swung in and then it's just there a lot of people i'm sure who are aspiring to do visual effects watch your stuff and you've probably inspired a lot of people to get into visual effects and visual trickery would you have any advice for those people who are trying to go out there and do their own thing? I would say like my own experience, I went to film school, I went to be a filmmaker. Some people say don't bother with film school. I thought it worked for me. Like I feel like that hands-on experience is the only place I could have done that. But VFX stuff, I do feel, especially today, like you could just get into it on your own. There's plenty of resources out there, plenty of courses, plenty of free YouTube videos. It's really where you take it from there. Like some people turn it into a big like empire of doing cool visual effects and cool projects. And some people, you know, they'll do a couple more hose videos and then they'll, they'll move on to becoming an accountant or something. So it's really <laughs> just like, how are you gonna climb that? Like whatever you achieve, just experiment, play with things and uh, keep learning. I think what you've done is kind of in a way the end goal of what a lot of people actually aspire to do, which is creating something that moves other people and you've now established a direct connection with you as the artist and the audience that wants your art. I do catch myself sometimes going like, ah, oh, you know, the thing I'm doing, that's not that great. But like, you do have to keep in mind, like, because I have an audience, like they appreciate the thing I make. It's almost like you build what you are by like seeing how people are reacting, how your audience is reacting to you. And like, what else are you, we really doing it for? Guys and gals, today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Now, if you are an entrepreneur, creator, maybe you have a small business, maybe you just wanna get a website out there so you can get your product or your name or your brand out there, well, guess what? Courtesy of today's sponsor, Squarespace, we have one of the best ways for you to do that. Squarespace has been around for years and all they do is create beautiful award-winning templates with 24-7 award-winning customer service so that without knowing anything about a website, you can create something magnificent. Squarespace has a members area feature, which allows you to put a gated area for content on your site and allow members to access that however you want. They've got connected social media accounts, meaning that you can make one post from your Squarespace website and have that automatically go out and format to multiple different social media platforms. They allow multiple contributors, so if you have a small team or maybe even a large team, you can give different people different levels of access to contribute to your site. They also have video blocks and 
audio blocks, which allow you to embed video content and audio content into your site and to have that content go out into the world however and wherever you need it. And last but not least, Squarespace gives you some of the best traffic overviews tools in the game. They give you insights on data, where your people are coming from, how they're engaging with your site and the experience that you are offering to them. When you start to understand this, you can continue to make a better and better website. And with all these magnificent tools, Squarespace allows you to do that conveniently, easily, and without a team of developers to develop a site for you. That's what they're for. They've done it. They already have a team of developers. Just ask them. So if you guys are interested in getting started for yourself, head on over to squarespace.com slash corridor crew and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And thanks to Squarespace for always coming through on this channel. They're a huge, amazing sponsor. Let's get back to that Captain D. All right, so since we have Captain D Solution on the couch, I think it's important that we ask for you, Leave a comment for other visual effects magicians that are out there, whether it's on YouTube, TikTok, old vines, whatever. If you can find obscure stuff that's worthy of my debunking talents, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Yes. Heck yeah, leave a comment. If you think these episodes are too short, well, you're in luck at CorridorDigital.com. We have extended episodes. And also, if you're more of a Friday night VFX artist react kind of person, all episodes come out the day before. And Son of a Dungeon is also finished. Oh yeah, we also made this huge show called Son of a Dungeon. It's a D&D &D show that got turned into like basically a Game of Thrones style season of fantasy action. Guess what? It's only $3.99 a month. There's also a two week free trial. Stop it, I'm subscribing now. Please <laughs> stop it, no more. stop it. Alan, I've watched your stuff for years. I really respect how long you've been doing it for. I feel like we're kind of brothers in that sense that we've also been on YouTube doing visual effects for years. We've seen the world change around us. We're still holding on to our ways, keeping them alive. It's been an absolute honor and a pleasure to have you join us on the show, so thank you. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a real pleasure. I'm not intimidated at all. It's been <laughs> awesome. Well, that's it for the bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> what are you all gonna be telling me every single day in my inbox to guest on now? Nothing. My life's <laughs> work is complete. No, you're just gonna go, you're gonna fly back and then they'll be like, what are you doing? Go back, get back there. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have me back. Yeah, anytime. Thank you. I, I would love it. Yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed this. Sweet. Well, thank you so much. See you guys in the next one. This isn't a brand integration. I just want to tell you that we have a bunch of new incredible merchandise in CorridorDigital.store just in time for Christmas, including but not limited to the incredible new bomber jacket. We spent a year in development on this jacket. We got a whole new design from the look, style, fit, and texture. Gabe made an incredible map design that goes on the inside of the jacket. And we have only a limited number that are only available right now. We've got a bunch of other new stuff in store too, including women's cuts, brand new hats like this one right here with this cool corridor digital tag right on the inside brand new book bags so head on over to corridordigital.store and don't forget if you're a member of corridordigital.com you get 15% off all merch all the time and first dibs just another reason to be subscribed to the site but if you're not don't worry there's still gonna be some stuff left for you but you got to get in there quick anyways I just want to let you know it's the best way to support us if you're not subscribed to our website so that's it enjoy bye <laughs>